This is Deuteronomy 28 and 15, but it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Most High thy power, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So these curses are here. They won't be lifted until Yahweh returns. Okay, anyone who says there's no, there's no curse, they don't know the scriptures. Let's go to Revelation 22. Revelation 22. And let's read from verse 1. We're going to read down to verse 3. Verse 1 of Revelation chapter 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb, who we call Yahweh who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. In the midst of the street of it, and of either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits. Twelve manner of fruits are coming out of the twelve tribes of Israel. And yielded her fruit every month, every new moon. We're going to tell the people to keep the commandments. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. We're going to heal the nations. Verse 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. So when is that curse going away? It ain't ever going away. Those who say, now the Christian churches will tell you, I believe in Christ. That curse is gone. It ain't leaving until we raised from the dead and the twelve tribes of Israel are ruling with the Most High and Yahweh Shai. Curse ain't going nowhere. It's on our children. We can't even save our own children as much as we try. We can't save our own people. You can't save your brother or your sister from the affliction of this world. You can't. The only way you can save them is to give them the, the knowledge of the Most High, the law, statutes, commandments, and for them to choose right and wrong, either to accept life or death. Okay? Because you got to remember, the Most High said that he was going to make these plagues wonderful. Deuteronomy 28, verse 59. Deuteronomy 28 verse 59. I'll start at 58. He read, it reads, If thou would not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear the glorious and fearful name, the Most High thy power, then the Most High will make thy plagues wonderful. Y'all know what wonderful is? It's things you can't even imagine. Different habitations. Just crazy things. Y'all know what beautiful, wonderful is. But how about plagues that are wonderful? That's what he mean. You see AIDS, cancer, uh, all these different things that we have in our communities today. And, and then the flu. How many times I got to come up with a new flu shot? Every year it's a new type of flu shot for a different type of strain that keeps coming out. These are plagues that are wonderful. Diabetes, got different types of diabetes. Okay? You got different types of medic medications you have to take for different types of sicknesses that add to the sicknesses. These are plagues that are wonderful with all these different side effects. Wonderful plagues. Alright? You get a cut. People think, oh, it's just a cut. I just let it heal. And you mess around and die two days later because you got some in your skin that's materializing and growing. Right? Like the scabies or all these different things they have, man. Staph disease. You have to be careful because the Most High wants us to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Now, will He protect us? Yes, He will protect us, but the curse is still going to be here. Why do you think we have to continually pray and stay in the Spirit so the curses can't come on us? That He will have mercy to not have it run into you while you're walking. He controls your footsteps to walk around these plagues. So it says, verse 59, Then the Most High will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, that's your children, even great plagues, and of long continuance, meaning they ain't going to go away, you're going to be suffering for a long time, and sore sickness, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. Most of us don't even know what that is. But a lot of the Egyptians had gout. They had gout. 
which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto you. And also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. Then will the Most High bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. See that? So this is these are the things that we have to understand that these things were spoken to us. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 28 and 9. And our people are lost for a lack of knowledge because we don't listen. We don't listen. That's our issue in this world today. We don't listen. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. And this is what the topic of the uh, subject of the class is today. Isaiah 28, 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Those are questions. It says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. All right. So you look at a baby. A baby, when he starts to get teeth in his mouth, he stopped breastfeeding. Well, most people stop their children from breastfeeding when they start getting teeth in their mouth. All right. That's the way the Most High likens us in this truth. Learning this different uh, information that he presents to us on a day-to-day -day basis. It says, and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line, here little and there little. Okay? So here little and there little. This is something that we have to really ponder on. It says, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. <clears throat> stammering lips is when you speak this truth and knowledge to people, they don't get it. They think that, that you'll know it all, but you don't know what you're talking about, one or the other. But when he says, here little and there little, this is our dilemma. When you look at the Christian churches, they teach, do they teach the whole book or do they teach just a little bit of the book? They teach just a little, but they never t talk about the other little. What's the other little? The old, old Testament, keeping the commandments. They say the commandments are what? Done away with. The commandments are not done away with. They're still here, man. What's done away with? What did Christ die on the cross for? To take away blood sacrifice. What about the other laws? What about the feast days? Are they still here? Yes. What about the dietary laws? Is that, is that still here? Absolutely. Okay. What about what about the moral laws? Thou shalt not kill, steal. Thou shalt love your mother. Thou shalt love the Most High with all your heart, mind, and soul, which is the greatest. That's the greatest commandment. What about those? Do they teach these things in the church, in the Christian churches? Look at the Christian churches. Are they not divided amongst themselves? Is the different countries, America and Europe and EU and NATO, are they divided amongst themselves? Yes. They're all divided amongst themselves. Different congregations, different religions. They all have something in common. They have the Bible, but they all have a different understanding. Right? Some of them even have their own books. Jehovah Witnesses have their books. Seventh-day Adventists have their own books. The Mormons have their own books. Uh, uh, the Catholics have their own books, etc., etc., etc. Scientology had their own books. Islam, which also teaches uh, of the Bible, they have their own book. So, what little is the Most High talking about? You can't hear. You can't hear unless someone is speaking the truth to you. So, what is the truth? A lot of people don't know what the truth is. Let's go to Psalms 119 142. What is the truth? The book of Psalms 119 verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. What's the truth? Is it everything that we were saying earlier about the different uh, types of religions? No. The scripture says 
thy righteousness is everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. See that? That's the truth. The testimonies are his truth. The precepts are his truth. Look at verse 14. Well, I'm sorry, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and the law is the truth. Now jump up, 141. I am small and despised, yet do not I forget thy precepts. Why is he small and despised? Because when you come into this knowledge, you will be hated because you teach other people the truth. Why? Because you're trying to get them to change. When you look at a child or even an athlete, an athlete who wants to be better is going to go to a coach that knows the sport. He may not even know nothing about that coach, but that coach may know everything about basketball, football, baseball, boxing, whatever. Before that athlete gets accustomed to that coach, that, that athlete may hate the coach because the coach is going to be something that he is not expecting him to be. The coach is going to coach him until he hates him. But you know what? In the end, he's going to love the coach because the coach is going to make him better. The same thing with the United States military. You go into the military, you get on a bus, you go where? The boot camp. In the boot camp, what are they doing at you? Yelling at you the whole time. Yelling at you. Trying to defame you. Trying to break down your character. Trying to hurt you. Okay? Why? Because they're trying to make you better. You come out of the military, you're groomed. You're clean cut. You follow orders. You have a good rationale. It's the same thing with the Most High. You bring the truth to those who are not disciplined, they will hate you. People in the Christian churches are not disciplined. That's why they hate you. When you're operating in the truth, guess what? You're disciplined. Very disciplined. You can break down this scripture, that scripture, this scripture, that scripture. Here a little, there a little. Alright? So you got to remember, our people are lost for a lack of knowledge. Isaiah chapter 28 and let's read verse 10 again. Isaiah 28 verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. What's a precept? Verses. Verses that match. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. And there a little. Okay. Let's see, have you heard this little? Have you heard this little? Let's go to Revelation. Now many people skip over this verse. And when they hear it, it's almost like embarrassment. It's almost like, please turn the channel. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. Revelation 13, verse 9. It reads, If any man have an ear, let him hear. If you got an ear, you're going to listen, right? All you need is one ear, but you got to be able to listen. You got to hear. Everybody don't hear good. Some people hear, but they take one word here, every other word they hear. Whatever is going on in their life or in their mind, they mix that up with it and just mess up the whole thing you just said. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Now, can you hear that little? Can you hear that line? It says, he that go leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Who went into captivity in the Americas? The Negroes, Native American Indians, okay? They went into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. All right, that's gonna happen again. They killed us. Guess what the Most High going to do when he returns? He's going to kill them. That's why he says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. Let's go there real quick. Let's go. It says, Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto the Most High and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 
Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Okay, that's with a sword. Then they pierced Yahushua with a sword. He said he's coming, and he's coming after who? After those who pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, our mind. So he's coming back to what? He's coming back after those who pierced him. Go to verse, chapter 2, verse 27. This is the little that people don't read. This is a precept upon precept. Revelation chapter 2, verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Who's he going to rule? Those who pierced him. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Who pierced him? The Roman Empire pierced him. Is the Roman Empire still here? Yes, they broke up into ten common markets. Okay? You want to know what they are? Ten common, mar common markets? Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Denmark, Ireland, United Kingdoms, Greece. They broke, broke apart in the e into the EU, NATO. They all came out of seven major empires. The seven major empires are Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, and Great Britain. And out of them came a little horn called America. All right? This is who he's coming to break them down with the rod of iron. Those who pierced them. It says, even as in verse Revelation chapter 2, verse 27, finishing up, it says, even as I received of my Father, and I will give him the morning star, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right? Who is the actual church? Who is the actual church? The Israelites are the actual church. That's the little bit that people don't know about. Let's go to the book of Acts. Let's find out who that church is. People don't know what a church is. Book of Acts chapter 7. We're going to find out who the real church is. Acts chapter 7, verse 37. Acts chapter 7, verse 37. It reads, This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Most High your power raise up unto you of your brethren. Like unto me, him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Who was in the wilderness? The Israelites were in the wilderness. So how are they a church? They didn't have a great huge building in the wilderness. Out there in the desert. Wandering for 40 years. And for, you know, they didn't have no building out there. No big old Christian church with a cross on top of it. Or a pyramid on top of it. Right? So the church was in the wilderness and it was with the children of Israel. That's who the church is. Alright? The angel was with that church. This is the little that the world don't hear. This is the little. So line upon line... Here a little and there a little. You know? Let's see another little. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 7. Let's see if they heard this little. Proverbs. And we'll just go on precept for precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. This is the little. Isaiah wrote the formula. That's a formula to read the Bible. But the churches don't read that. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Proverbs <clears throat> chapter 7 verse 2. It reads, Keep my commandments and live in my law as the apple of thine eye. But no, they said that the law is done away with. They said the law is done away with. That's what they say. Bind them upon thy fingers Write them upon the table of thine heart. This is what the Most High said. Write them on your finger, bind them on your fingers, and write them on the table of your heart. Okay, you can ask, you can ask five adults what your heart is. 
They'll give you five different definitions. One to say, my heart. My heart is standing right next to me. Another one to say, my heart is pumping in my chest. Your heart can't think, it's just an organ. It pumps. How's the heart going to tell you what to do? Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Let's see what the heart is. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So what is that? How is your heart deceitful? Something that pumps blood throughout your body. How is that possible? How can your heart be that deceitful? That means your whole body would be poisoned, right? Alright, we have to understand what that is. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 15, verse 3. When we, all we're doing is showing you a little. Just a little. This is in the Apocrypha, Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15, verse 3. Sirach, chapter 15, verse 3. I'll start at verse 1, because we're talking about the heart. It says, He that feareth the Most High will do good, and he that hath the knowledge of the law shall obtain her. Where are you going to keep that knowledge at? In your heart or in your mind? And as a mother shall she meet him and receive him as a wife married of a virgin. You come into this law, guess what? You are a virgin. You keep the laws and don't follow no other religions, you will be a virgin. This is what the virgin means. It doesn't mean that a virgin, like I think in Revelation 14, it talks about the 144,000 would be men who are virgins. It's not talking about not having sex. This is talk because the scriptures tell us to multiply. It tells the men to get a wife and multiply, have children. So it's not talking about the men being virgins not having sex with their wives, okay? So a virgin is when you come into the laws, statutes, and commandments, and you keep them, and you don't start worshiping other gods like, oh, I'm gonna go dibble and dabble in Islam. You know, I just want to see what they what they're talking about. Most I said he's he's a jealous power. He don't even want you to know anything about these other gods. Nothing. He don't want you reading any books. Like the Quran, that's called the unholy Quran, not the holy Quran. It's the unholy Quran. Oh, the holy Quran. No, it's the unholy Quran. That's what it is. The Buddhist books, the Kiba Nagas out of Ethiopia, that's an unholy book. Don't even do one dabble in it. Mosai is a jealous power. He just wants you to learn his law, statutes, commandments. Verse 3. With the bread of understanding shall she feed him and give him the water of wisdom to drink. Alright, that wisdom is what we just read in Isaiah chapter 28. It's the milk. What is the milk? These scriptures. Alright. But the Most High says that all have fallen short of the glory of him. All that the Most High made, the man first, and the glory second. The glory of the, the man, which is the woman, second. Right? All have fallen short. Let me show you how wicked the heart can be. Uh, you women need to listen to this too, because this is talking about when you don't have a man in the truth, and when you're not following a brother who's in the truth teaching the word. This is what happens, and this falls upon, the, this is what I'm about to read, falls upon the brothers that are in the truth, uh, that don't guide the woman right. Okay, let's go to uh, Sarah, chapter 25, in the Apocrypha. Sarah, chapter 25, verse 13. Sarah, 25 and 13. Now listen to this. It says, give me any plague but the plague of the heart. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart. And any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. You hear that? Because the heart is already desperately wicked. So if you're wicked to, you, to yourself by not keeping the laws, what do you think your woman going to be? She's going to be even wickeder. 
Because she follows the man. That's how the Most High set it up. First the man, then the woman, then the children. So if the man is wicked, the woman is even more wicked. If the man is keeping the commandments but not teaching his wife the commandments, she's still going to be operating in deceitfulness. And she's going to be just as more wicked towards that man as if he wasn't in the truth. Verse 14. And any affliction but the affliction from them that hate me, and any revenge but the revenge of your enemies. See, you got to keep the commandments and teach them. So your enemies can't get, get the upper hand on you. The Most High provide a place and a way for you to escape. Verse 15. There is no head above the head of a serpent. And there is no wrath above the wrath of an enemy. Hear that? And we have to understand that the Most High wants us all to be content with his law, statutes, and commandments. All of us. So let's find out what happens when you get a woman... And you train her up to be a good woman, utilizing the word of the Most High. Sirach 26, verse 23. And all this has to do with the mind. All this has to do with the heart. The little bit. The little. It says, uh, this is Sirach, or Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. See, this is just what we were talking about. But a godly woman is given to him that fear of the Most High. A godly woman is given to that man that instructeth his wife in righteousness. Okay, she would be a tower to him. She would help him, a helpmate. Let's go to Sarai 36 and 24. The book of Sarai chapter 36 and 24. It reads, He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself and a pillar of rest why is she a pillar of rest because he's instructed her in the ways of truth so when this brother goes off his wife is going to remember what he instructed her and remind him remember what you told me that this is what we're supposed to do on the sabbath that this is what we're supposed to eat he gets a pillar of rest she's going to help him she's going to guide him okay let's go back to um Sarah chapter 26. See, this is what needs to be taught in the churches. Sarah chapter 26, verse 1. It reads, Blessed is the man that haveth a virtuous wife. Who is a virtuous wife? Someone who is instructed in the word of the Most High, what she's supposed to do as a woman. Women always say, well, there's, they don't never talk about women in the scriptures. Women are all over the Bible. But the women are following their husbands. Who are instructed in the ways of righteousness. That makes that woman just as big. Behind every good man is a good woman, right? This is where it came from. It says, Blessed is the man that have a virtuous wife. For the number of his days shall be double. See that? Shall be double. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. See that? She is a pillar of rest. So this all has to do with the little. We haven't heard this, right? But now we have. Let's go back to uh, Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. And what we're reading is... And I always say this, it's kind of like if you ever play dominoes, it's that spinner. You know, everybody got to play off the spinner in dominoes. That's what Isaiah 28 9 is. All the way to verse 11. The whole Bible, the way you maneuver it and operate it, is based on Isaiah 28 9 through 11. If you don't operate with this, just imagine you playing dominoes with no spinner. Who's going to win? There's going to be two games going. <laughs> So you got to operate within the, the Most High, the law of the Most High. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. All right? 
So let me show you another little and another line. Check this out. Because he's talking about the little. This is Matthew chapter 5 and 17. Let's go there. Matthew 5 and 17. Is, you know, the little is what's going to save you. The greatest is going to save you, but you got to have the little to get into the kingdom. You got to have all of it. Like Timothy says, you know, the whole book is for correction and reproof. All the scriptures is. Matthew chapter 5 and 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. He didn't come to destroy the law. They said, oh, the law is done away with. They said he didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill it. Meaning he's going to show you what happens when you keep the law and what happens afterwards. Everlasting life. He's going to show us how to do it. We ain't never knew. Remember Deuteronomy 28 kicked in. We forgot. We lost our lack. We lost our knowledge. Somebody had to come back and show us the right way because they wasn't listening to the prophets. So he had to come back, show us miracles just so we could believe because we're so ignorant. Don't want to believe nothing. The most High allowed him to show us miracles just so we could be like, wow, and start following him. He had to have that clout. Now we know that he's of the most high and that we have to keep the laws to activate ourselves to get into the next kingdom. Matthew 5 and 17, it says, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily, he's going he gonna to double stamp it right here. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. Is, this, is it gone? Heaven's still here. Earth is still here. One aisle or one tittle, meaning any of these words, shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Whosoever, so that means when the earth and heaven is gone, everything has been fulfilled. Get it? It's not gone. We're still here. The stars are still here. Sun, moon, still here. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, there's a little, there's a little, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You want to be little? You're going to be real little. You don't keep these least commandments. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called what? Great in the kingdom of, the he uh, of heaven. Because this is what the Most High is telling us throughout the whole Bible. So you're going to be great because you kept the commandments for the Most High and yourself and your family. You want to be great? Keep the little. Hmm. Let's go to Matthew 28. Because, you know, in this world, it's all about achievements. Oh, I achieved this. I went to this school. I got a degree from here. I got my bachelor's from this. I got my master's from Yale. I went to Harvard. I got my doctorates. You know, that's what this world is all about. Achievements. I'm the CEO of such and such. I got this company over here. I got this many houses. It's, you know, those achievements are for this world. It's not for the next. I don't never go into the Seifer to teach, but I'm going to pull out something in here right now because it just reminded me of something. The Seifer has a book that we normally don't read from. The Book of Enoch, Jasher, Jubilees, Right? We normally don't teach from those books. But I, it don't mean that I don't read from it. I try to tell brothers and sisters to keep study the 66 books, which is in the 1611 King James Bible. But just for this one incident, I got to show you what this says. This is actually in the book of Enoch. Since we're talking about achievements, I'm going to go to uh, in the book, of, in the Sefer book, which is uh, coming from the Library of Congress. I don't just read any old book of Enoch. Thanks to the brother Yahar for enlightening me. Um, uh, let's go to chapter 48. And I'm going to read verse 7 through 8. And if you don't have one, just listen. Because we're talking about achievements, and I just want to show you that achievements don't mean Jack Dilly squat in the next kingdom or to the most high. Unless you're using it to wake up more brothers and sisters. Okay, because many brothers who get achievements, they think they're all adding a bag of chips, so to speak. And they hold these donations, 
right? They have these fundraisers, and none of it is for the Most High. I don't care how much money you raise, how many donations you give, how many people you help, if it's not for the Most High, name to be exalted, and His commandments to be taught, it was all worthless. It was all a worthless achievement. All right? Even if you fed somebody and they was hungry for three days and you fed them some turkey or something, it don't mean jack dilly squat. All right? This is the book of Enoch, chapter 48, verse 7. And it reads, For in his name shall they be preserved, and his will shall be their life. In those days shall the kings of the earth and the mighty men who have gained the world by their achievements become humble in countenance. For in the day of their anxiety and trouble, their souls shall not be saved, and they shall be in subjection to those whom I have chosen. See that? They're going to be in subjection to who? To those who believe and keep the law, statutes, and commandments. They will not be saved. Now, that's all I wanted to bring out. So your achievements, they ain't, they ain't worth nothing unless you can help people in the truth. You see? You gotta understand the way the Most High thinks, man. He don't think like us. He don't think like the, the brothers and sisters on this earth. We have to think like Him. We have to change our ways to convert to Him, not the other way around. Alright, let's go to uh, Matthew tw chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. And it reads, And Yahweh came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Alright, so here's Jehoshaphat telling us to keep all things and baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And to teach all nations, see? A lot of y'all don't understand that we are supposed to go to all nations to teach out loud to wake up the Israelites who are scattered amongst these nations. That's why you have to know the whole book. If you don't know the whole book, you ain't going to know what he's talking about when he says all nations. You think he's supposed to say everybody. Uh-uh. You're talking about the Israelites who are scattered amongst these nations. The book of John chapter 7 verse 35. John chapter 7 verse 35 and it says then said the Jews among themselves whither will he go that we shall not find him will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles okay so you understand that he's saying that he will go he will leave them go to the other nations where the Gentiles dwell because the other nations are Gentiles and teach the Gentiles. Now the Gentiles ain't talking about all the people. You notice he said, Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles? Among them. That means Israelites who left the land, went amongst the other nations, and are scattered amongst them, and calling themselves by the other nations. That's why you see the book of Ephesians, the book of Galatians, the book of Romans, all these different books, right? Thessalonians, because Israelites were calling themselves these names. Thessalonians. They were calling them the same they were calling themselves the same names as the other nations. Just like we call ourselves what here? Americans. You go into Africa or you go to India somewhere, they'll say, What are you? I'm an American. No, what are you? What's your nationality? What's your ethnicity? Then you're gonna tell oh, I'm I'm black. Black ain't an ethnicity, it ain't a nation. So what are you? You're an Israelite scattered amongst the Americans. Alright? You're an Israelite scattered amongst the Mexicans. You're an Israelite scattered amongst the uh, uh, the islanders. 
You're Israelite scattered amongst the Jamaicans. Okay, because those are not our names, all those other names. So yeah, he said, go and teach all nations. Right? That's why you have to understand just a little in the other books. You have to understand line upon line, precept upon precept, or else you will not know what you're reading. The whole New Testament is in riddles, and the church teach from the New Testament and don't even realize it's a riddle. The whole thing. They had to teach that way in the New Testament because the Romans, they were subject, they were under subjection to the Romans. And if they said anything other than contrary to a Roman, they got killed, crucified, head cut off, family taken for tax reasons. Okay? It's all in riddles. The New Testament. That's why people can't understand it. That's why they don't want to deal with the Old Testament because it was just too much for them to understand because we are still governed by the same people who govern those brothers and sisters in the New Testament. It's the same people governing us today. The Italians, right? The Roman Italians is all over the place. Guess what? There's all kinds of Italians here in America. They're ruled. You ever heard of the Italian Mafia? Okay, who are now in politics? Giuliani and all these other dudes? Trump, Donald Trump, they all they're all friends. Come on, man. That's why you say he's coming back to pierce those who pierced him. They still ruling. This, this fourth beast ain't never fell. The fourth kingdom is still here. All you need to know is just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Matthew chapter 4. Let's go. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 3. Matthew chapter 4 verse 3. And this is Jehovah Shai. This is when he went on his journey and, and the devil came to tempt him. Okay, this is Matthew 4 verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of the Most High, command that these stones be made bread. That's what Satan told him. Why did Satan know this? Because Satan knew all the scriptures too. Just like Yahushua. Look at what Yahushua said. He says, but he answered and said, it is written. It is written where? Where is it written? Is it written in the New Testament? How am I find that if I don't know the Old Testament? Deuteronomy chapter 8 tells you where it was written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Most High. Here a little, there a little, here a little, there a little, 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 little. It is written. He used the commandments, the least just to take out Satan. He used just the least to beat him up. Hamashiach was destroying Satan with the little bit of this line and that line. As his father said. Go to Exodus 15. Look at Exodus chapter 15. Y'all don't understand that we are living during a harsh time. Exodus 15. Look at Exodus 15 and 3. It says... The Most High Yahweh is a man of war. Y'all, a lot of a lot of people get confused. They're like, how you know he's a man? Well, it tells you in the scriptures he's a man. He ain't no woman. The scriptures tell you he's a man. The Most High is a man of war. The Most High is his name. His most, the Most High Yahweh is his name. Go to Numbers 21 and 14. You better take a number and stand back. Numbers 21 verse 14. Look at this. Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Most High. What he did in the Red Sea. What he did in the Red Sea. And in the brooks of Arnon. Book of wars. But well, we in battle right now. We're all warriors man. The men of wars and the women of wars. Right. And he got strategies. He got tactics. The Most High got tactics. That means that Satan got tactics too to get at you. He got angles to get at you. We got to pick our weapons for battle. You can't do battle if you don't know the little. How you gonna How you gonna battle? If you don't know the little. You got to know all of it. Let's go to Sarah chapter thirty-five. The Book of Sarah in the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus. Sarah 35 and 1. It reads, He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. Hmm. So if you keep the law, 
you're offering to the Most High. If you don't keep the law, what are you offering? See, you have to always think the other way around too. If you don't, if you don't keep the law, what are you offering to the Most High? He that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. So every time you keep the commandment and push things away from your dietary law and try to keep the Sabbath day, you're offering a peace offering to the Most High. Keeping a feast day, this is a peace offering. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Let's go to Proverbs 13 and 13. Let's see when you don't keep the law what happens. Proverbs chapter 13 and 13. Proverbs 13 and 13. This is when you don't keep the law and give a peace offering. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. So y'all see what happens when you don't give a peace offering and the Most High is angry. he take you out. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. See that? You wonder why every time you cut on the news, people be dying, getting shot, you know, getting their hair blown out. Oh, Uber driver, she just started doing Uber Eats. Why she get her hair blown off? She's only 19, trying to make a living for college. Hey, she ain't got the law. She ain't keeping the law. Oh, she was such a nice girl. She was so peaceful and so pretty. She's such a pretty girl. I can't believe she got killed. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Evil as hell. Not keeping the laws at all. Yeah, see? Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. See that? I understand. Most I ain't trying to deal with no brutes. Alright? Christians are brutes. How did they how did they take over the Middle East? Being brutish. How did they take us into captivity, into slavery? Book of Galatians. It's all about the little. Here a little and there a little. But stammering lips in another tongue. We all speak in different languages. We ain't none of us speaking Hebrew. That ain't the real language. Stammering. We speak in a damn language. This language was damn. They, somebody came up with this language. English. Pig Latin is another language English came out of. Pig Latin. Galatians chapter 4 verse 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Paul was speaking to the seed of promise. When you read this whole chapter, that's who he's talking about. And he's still talking to the seed of promise. The Israelites who are in the spirit of Hamashiach, while keeping the law is the seed, is while keeping the law is the seed of what? Seed of light. But those who do not are in bondage. They're the Gentiles. You know, the Gentiles, they, they can even, if the Gentiles even try to keep the law, they still in bondage. A lot of our brothers who keep the law are in bondage too. Because they don't believe in Hamashiach Yavashai. They're still in bondage too. We still got to believe in Christ. Jesus Christ, Yahweh Christ is what we say. You still got to believe in him. But being born of the free woman, if you read the scriptures, it's talking about the free woman versus the bond woman, which was Sarah and Hagar. Abraham had two wives, right? He had a handmaid, Hagar, who had a son, Ishmael. Those are the Arabs today over there in, um, you know, Northeast Africa or, or Middle East, so they say. That's Ishmael. Who was Isaac? Isaac is... The 12 tribes of Israel, who I keep mentioning to y'all, of Negroid and American Indian descent. Alright? So, if we were born of Sarah, we're free. Because that spirit, is, it dwells within us. See, if you don't understand 
the Old Testament, you will not understand Galatians chapter 4. It's a mystery. This is the first thing they'll try to pull out to you when you try to tell them about the scriptures. Galatians chapter 4, Ephesians. They don't even understand what Paul's saying. He's talking about the freedom of Israel if they keep the law, statutes, and commandments. They'll be rulers over all. Look at Romans chapter 11. Like I said, if you don't know the little, you won't know the, the greatest. Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Romans 11, 25. Same thing with this chapter. People get lost with this one. Romans 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, who's the brethren? We're going to read about the brethren as we keep going. That ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Christians are wise in their own conceits. Now, can Israelites be Christians? Sure, we were the first Christians. But the Christians that you consider today, these are Roman Christians. Okay, all these churches are considered Romanized. They're all Roman Christians because of Constantine who changed everything to pagan, from pagan to Christianity, merging the Bible into different things. That's why you see Easter in the Bible. It's not supposed to be Easter. It's supposed to be Passover. It says, least ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part has happened to Israel unto the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Now, how could blindness happen to Israel? Because of Constantine. Because of slavery. We've become blind. We, we, we have learned lies since then. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, Yahushua, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Jacob is the Israelites. So, when he says, for I would not brethren, who's the brethren? He says at the very end of verse 26, Jacob. Jacob is the Israelites. That's why you have to read and understand. He gives you the answer in the next verse. Let's go to Colossians 1 and 26. That's who the brethren are. It's all about the Israelites. The Israelites are the underdog in this world today. We are the underdog. They don't think we'll ever get up. They think we're totally destroyed. That's how they, that's how they look at us. Colossians chapter 1 and 26. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom the Most High would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Hamashiach in you, the hope of glory. See that? That's why it says, whom we preach one in every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Hamashiach Yahweh Everyone has to hear, but we are searching for the Israelites amongst all men. So we're going to touch every soul teaching this word to get the Israelites out of them, who may be hidden by confusion of faces, different nationalities, see? Right? He's going to come back for his saints. Let's find out who the saints are. Let's go to um, let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter one forty nine. Y'all should know this one by heart. If you don't know, you're about to know. But this is also the little that people have forgotten about. Psalms 149. Let's go to Psalms 148, verse 13. Psalms 148. Psalms 148, verse 13. It says, Let them praise the name of the Most High, for His name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. Who is that? There's only one power, not all gods. And also exalteth the horn of his people. Is this everybody? The praise of all his saints. Now we've been taught that those of, of the Catholic Church over there are saints. Mother Teresa and John Pope, John Paul, whatever their names are. They are not the saints. 
It says, The praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Most High. So the saints are the Israelites. See that? It's right there for you to see it. This is the little. This is a line upon line, the precept upon precept. Let's go to precept now. Psalms 147. And look at verse 19. Because <clears throat> the Most High only entrusts his own people. It says, Psalms 147 verse 19. He showed off his word unto who? Jacob. Jacob and Israel are two, the same. Two words. It's the same. Just like you got a nickname. That's Israel's nickname, Jacob. That was his name before. Now you have a little name when you when you a young person and then you grow up into adult. Your name might have been little Pookie. Then you get up, then you get older and you like, my name ain't Pookie, it's Cedric. Don't call me Pookie no more. I'm grown. That's Jacob in Israel. Okay. It says, He show off his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Most High. Now that you see your name in the Bible, that should trigger you. To be like, man, every time I see Israel, I see my name now. Because before, when you read it, you didn't have any connection. Because you didn't see your name in the Bible as being Israel. And that that was your forefathers. You just read it and didn't understand. But now you should understand because there is a connection between you and thousands of years ago. This is your family tree. Your family line. You should know now. Let's go to Psalms chapter 50. Psalms chapter 50. This is us. This is something written for us in the future that nobody understood. Psalms chapter 50 verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. If you keep the law, you ain't got to make no sacrifice. Remember, sacrifices are done away with. But like we read in Sarah chapter 35, what did he say? Those who keep the law make up for peace, peace offering. So Yahushua did away with the sacrifices. Because it was brutish. Dealt away with it. We didn't change. Now you have to do it through your, through your heart, through your mind. Okay? And you have to prove, prove it to him. So who are these saints? He said, gather my saints together unto me. So let's go to the beginning and find out in the beginning, who did he call the saints? Who did he say gather? Let's go to Genesis 49, the very first book of the Bible. And we can prove to you who he's talking about in the book of Galatians chapter 4 and all the other parts of the New Testament right here. Genesis 49 verse 1. Genesis 49 verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons, who are the twelve tribes of Israel, and said, Gather yourselves together. He said the same thing he said in Psalms chapter 50. He said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. So who is this applied to? If you told your son, son, he's 15 right now and he get 30. When you get 30, watch out. This is what's going to happen. Tell your sons, tell your daughters, your grandbabies, tell everybody this is what's going to happen. They ain't going to want you to call yourself by your name no more. They're going to make you change your name. Okay? They don't want you to dress like, like you used to dress. They want you to dress a new way. He's telling them to gather themselves together and be aware for what's coming is going to come in the last days. Verse 2. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob. And hearken unto Israel your father. You see that? Now, when you read this whole chapter, he's breaking down what's going to happen. All the 12 tribes, what's going to happen to them? Hmm. Look at the last verse of Genesis 49. The last verse. It says, uh, start at 28. Let's go to 28. We'll drop, drop down to 33. Verse 28. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spoke unto them. And blessed them. Everyone according to his blessing. He blessed them. So who is this blessing coming on? The twelve tribes of Israel. When we read. The blindness has come upon Israel. It's talking about the sons. They forgot. 
But he said it's going to be revealed in the last days who they are. That's now. Start down to verse 33. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the spirit and was gathered unto his, his people. What people? His forefathers before him. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Shem. Okay, all the way back to Noah. All right. This is, this is Jacob. This is Israel. This is what the whole New Testament is talking about. And as you read the New Testament, you will see no 12 tribes of Israel in there no more. Why? Because they took it out. Because of the Romans. The Romans controlled this. But, just speaking in riddles, they said, this is the mystery. Let's go to James 1 and 1. The book of James in the New Testament, verse 1 and 1. Chapter 1 and 1. It reads, James chapter 1 verse 1, a servant of the Most High, and of the Most High, Yahweh, by Shem HaMashiach Yahushai, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Well, they all fell into diverse temptations, even up to this day. So he's saying the same thing that his forefather Jacob said. To the, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. He didn't say nothing about the Gentiles scattered. He didn't say nothing about the other nations. He said we scattered amongst the nations. See? So Zephaniah 2 and 1. This is the mystery. This is why the churches, you don't walk out with nothing in your chest, man. That's why you don't see no men in the churches nowadays unless they pimps. All right? It's only, it's only three three P's that come out on Sunday. Pimps, players, and what? Preachers. <laughs> three, pit, three P's. Let's go to Zephaniah. Book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. Okay, now we're not desired. See, a lot of people don't understand that verse. When he says, O nation, not desired, we're not desired. We're getting shot down in the streets. We're getting arrested. Things are happening to us. We get, we get, uh, you know, we get ostracized in this world. We get profiled. Before we even get into a building, they're looking at us backwards and forwards. We try to do things for our community. Why we got why we got that all on our shoulders trying to support our whole community? This is us. We're a nation not desired. But he's saying, gather yourselves, man. I know y'all not desired. Gather. Gather together. Y'all the twelve tribes of Israel. I knew your father in the old days. I'm gonna gather you together just like I promised him. That's what he's saying. So we gotta gather ourselves together. So when it comes to Galatians. Or even in the New Testament, most like I said, most people don't understand it. Because they don't understand a little. They don't understand a little of the Old Testament. Let's go to Isaiah again. 28. Look at Isaiah. The little is important. The little is important. Isaiah 28 verse 12. To whom he said, this is the rest. Wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. This is our rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. See? Hear a little and there a little. Our people won't hear. But the word of the Most High was unto them. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Hear a little and there a little. That they might go and fall backward. And be broken and snared and taken. That's our people in these churches. What for? Because, you know, you can read the stuff backwards. <laughs> you can read the scriptures and think you read something, it'd be backwards on you. <laughs> oh, man. I had an uncle. He told me, he said, man, every time I read, man, I fall asleep. And I wake up and I read the same line over and over. Yeah, you read the backwards. That's why. <laughs> uh, verse 15. Because ye have said... We have made a covenant with death and with hell 
are we at agreement? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. See that? Therefore thus saith the Most High of hosts, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone. Zion is Israel. A petitious cornerstone. That's Yahushua, that cornerstone. A sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Don't make haste with this word. Right? You got to understand because if you don't understand, you'll be falling backwards. You'll be believing everything that's being taught to you on the television. On BET, right? All those different pastors that come on on Sunday. Uh, Creflo Dollar, TJ, Stanley Roberts, come on Channel 3, Channel 4. Right? You'll be believing everything they say. They're all set up to cause you to fall. Every last one of them. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. They're all set up to make you feel sad and happy. They want you to feel happy. Well, the scriptures are supposed to make you mad, right? It's supposed to, it's supposed to make you mad. It's supposed to make you almost hate it because you're in the wrong. But you got to learn to love it for the right, for the right reasons. That is chastising you and correcting you. First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-one. One and twenty-one. For after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Who are they he's trying to get to believe? It's those that are lost. You got to have a certain technique to get to those that are lost. All right? You ever see a, a, a dog that's scared to death? Or a cat? They sneak into a corner where you can't get it. You got to have a certain technique to get them to come out of that corner. You can't talk to a cat or a dog the same way you can a cat or dog that's tamed. They ain't never been hurt or scared. They'll come right to you. So it's, it's the same way with the people of Israel. We're lost. And we're afraid of new ways of thinking. All right, Which is of the scriptures of the Most High. So we gotta we gotta think along the lines of the way the most high wants us to understand. Okay. Uh, let's read on. Uh, verse 22. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Hamashiach crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Okay, this is talking about the Israelites or Greeks. Because this is where we were mostly scattered amongst the Greeks. And you have to read the book of Maccabees to understand this. A lot of our people were calling themselves Greeks. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, which are Israelites, Hamashiach, the power of the Most High and wisdom of the Most High, because the foolishness of the Most High is wiser than men, and the weakness of the Most High is stronger than men. What's the stumbling block? Not here in the little. Okay? These other religions teach, they don't teach the little. They harp on the greatest. What's the greatest? Yahweh will come and bring salvation. Right? That's the greatest. All you have to say is Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Okay? That's true if you keep the laws. But if you don't keep any laws or have any understanding, guess what? Get ready. How can you be how can you be saved if you don't know the little? How can you be saved if you don't know the lines and the precepts? Okay? You have to understand what's the greatest? Is it really that? Let's see what Yahweh said. What 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 is the greatest thing? Being saved by Jesus Christ or something different? We're gonna hear it out of his own mouth. Book of John chapter 10. John 10 and 20, 24. John 10 verse 24. Actually let's read verse 29. My father which gave them me is greater than 
than all. So who is Yahweh saying is greater? The Father. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So when Yahweh when you praise Yahweh you go into the hands of the Father. Okay? Which is the greatest. I and my Father are one. See that? So did the disciples keep the commandments? Yes. Did they know they were Israelites? Yes. Okay. They knew what the greatest was as well as the least. They knew the laws. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians. I'm going to wind down here. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's finish this chapter out. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. Not many. But the Most High have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And the Most High have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. A lot of our brothers who have made it in this world won't get this truth. They won't understand it. They'll reject it right off the bat because of pride. They'll reject it. That's why I said not many are called. Verse 28. And base things of the world and things which are despised have the Most High chosen. Base things. Who are the base people of this world today? It used to be Esau. Now Esau is exalted above us. He says, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle in the book of Obadiah. Remember that? He's exalted. Even the bums of Edomites are exalted over the rest of the nations. They can go to any country, wherever they want to go, and be exalted. We, on the other hand, are the base people. And everybody across the whole earth know that we are the base people. We're the most loved and most hated. All right? And base things of the, of the world and things which are despised hath the Most High chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye Hamash Yachim, who of the Most High is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth let him glory in the Most High. It's all about the Most High. It's all about the little. It's all about the precept upon precept and a lot upon lot. Glory in the Most High for teaching us all these things. All praises to Him. All right. He said, Yahweh shall buy Him. He's a company in the Most High. He is our brother. He represents us. He is the Son of Man. So when He stands before the Father in that earthly body, the Most High knows He's standing there because of us. A big thing. So with that, I'm going to conclude the class. Are there any questions, statements, or comments? This is the word of the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people as well. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their own land. 